In this video, we will be assembling the Brintley Moldboard Plow, model PP510 and model PP510A, for use with garden tractors and UTVs. Please note, this tractor attachment requires a sleeve hitch for use. Because of the variety of hitch heights on lawn tractors, the sleeve hitch that is best for your lawn tractor must be determined by the manufacturer of your lawn tractor. Tools required, a 10 inch adjustable wrench, a 15 16 inch wrench, a 13 16 inch wrench, a 3 quarter inch wrench, a half inch wrench, a 9 16 inch wrench, pliers, and gloves. Also note, the hardware illustrations on pages 4 to 6 are to scale. For faster identification of the hardware during assembly, place the hardware on top of the illustrations on pages 4 to 6 in your manual. Step 1. Assembling the plow frame. Place a half inch by one and three quarter inch hex head bolt through the center hole in one of the beams. Then slide the adjusting brackets onto the bolt, placing the recesses around the inside of the beams as shown. Then add the second beam half to the bolt, making sure the hole in the top of the adjusting brackets are oriented upwards. Add a half inch hex lock nut to secure the beams and the adjusting brackets together, hand tightening only for now. Step two, attaching the crank handle. First, slide the trunnion through the holes at the top of the adjusting brackets. Then, insert the crank handle through the holes in the side of the trunnion. Next, add the spacer and the two 5 8 inch jam nuts to the end of the crank handle. Thread one jam nut against the spacer just enough to eliminate any excessive movement of the crank against the trunnion, taking care not to bind the crank. Add the second nut and thread it all the way down to make contact with the first nut. Using two wrenches, lock the second jam nut against the first. Then thread the threaded tube with the flat end onto the end of the crank handle. Step 3. Adding the hitch bracket. Please note, the hitch bracket can be oriented to the left or right and the hitch pin should be placed in the hole that is closest to the center. To determine the alignment, measure the distance between the rear wheels on your tractor. Smaller tractors with a width of 16 to 19 inches will need the hitch oriented to the right using the first hole. If your wheels are 19 to 23 inches, you will orient the hitch to the left and place the hitch pin in the center or edge holes. These measurements can also be referenced in your manual. After the alignment is determined, using the chart in the manual, place the hitch bracket between both beams and line up the top back hole in the hitch with the inside hole of the side beams and slide a 5 8 inch by 2 inch bolt through the sides and hitch. Slide the second bolt through the side beams and hitch bracket. Then lay the piece down on its side and secure both bolts in place with two 5 16 inch nuts. Then set the frame beams and hitch bracket aside. Use caution while taking out the plow blade and the frog. Step 4. Attaching the plow bottom and standard. Next, align the three holes in the landslide and frog and attach them by passing two 3 8 inch by 1 inch plow bolts through the landslide and plow bottom. and secure them in place on the inside using two 3 8 inch hex nuts. And align the bottom hole in the standard with the middle hole in the frog. Then slide the half inch by one and a half inch carriage bolt through the standard and the frog and then slide the half inch by two inch plow bolt through all three pieces. Add a half inch nut to the end of each bolt and tighten the nuts using a 13 16 inch wrench. Then insert one half inch by one and a half inch adjusting bolt through the tab at the bottom of the standard and place the half inch square nut between the tab and the frog and thread the tracking adjusting bolt onto the square until it is tight. Step 5. Attaching the plow to the frame. 
Slide the standard between the beams, aligning the lower remaining opening of the standard. Then slide a half inch by one and three quarter inch bolt through the beams and standard, adding a half inch hex lock nut to the end of the bolt. Secure the bolt in place using two three quarter inch wrenches, but do not over tighten. The frame will need to be raised next, so re-loosen the bolts if needed before the next step. Then place a 9 16 inch spacer into the hole at the top of the standard. Note, you may need to unthread the threaded tube from the bolt for it to be able to reach the standard. Align and attach the flat end of the threaded tube by adding a half inch flat washer to a half inch by one and a half inch hex bolt and passing it through the spacer and the flat end of the threaded tube and add a half inch hex lock nut. Note, be sure to tighten these fasteners only so the threaded tube is free to pivot. Step 6A, assembling the coulter. First, insert the coulter standard into the fork and line up the holes in both. And using a hammer, drive the 5 16 inch by one and a quarter inch pin through the holes in both, leaving an equal amount of pin on each side. Step 6B, assembling the coulter blade. Attach the coulter hub to the coulter blade by passing the hub extension through the center hole in the coulter and passing three 5 16 inch by three quarter inch carriage bolts through the hub and the coulter. Adding a 5 16 inch flat washer to each bolt and securing the three bolts in place with three 5 16 inch lock nuts. Tighten down the carriage bolts, fully securing the coulter blade to the coulter hub. Then, install the coulter blade onto the fork by aligning the hole in the center of the coulter with the holes in the fork and pass the 5 8 inch by 4 inch coulter axle bolt through the fork and the coulter, adding two 5 8 inch flat washers to the end. Then, add the 8 inch by 1 and a quarter inch cotter pin to the hole in the end of the axle. Using pliers, bend the ends of the cotter pin to secure the axle in place. Step 7. Attaching the coulter assembly. Attach the coulter assembly to the plow beam by passing the U-bolt through the coulter clamp and one side of the plow beam. Then, slide two spacers between the plow beams and slide the U-bolt through the spacers and the second beam half, securing the U-bolt in place with two 5 8 inch hex nuts. Then, position the coulter standard between the U-bolt and the coulter clamp and move it up to the highest position. Tighten both bolts with a 15 16 inch wrench, but leave it loose enough so that you can adjust this later. The coulter blade will need to be adjusted fully after the piece is hitched up to your tractor or UTV. Your Brindley moldboard plow is now fully assembled and ready to calibrate. Operational tips and calibration. This moldboard plow requires a sleeve hitch to operate. To attach the plow, first remove the stabilizer bolts and nuts from the sleeve hitch. Mount the plow to the sleeve hitch with the hitch pin furnished with your hitch or with a Brindley magnetic hitch pin which can also be purchased separately. Then adjust the depth crank of the plow until the point of the plowshare is on the ground and the rear of the plowshare is approximately one inch off of the ground. You may need to loosen the nuts on the crankshaft using a 15 16 inch wrench to be able to turn the crankshaft. Then with the plow coulter adjusted in the highest position, Make your first two furrows, making sure the tractor lift handle is lowered and locked into the down position. Move steadily so the earth will turn over and not fall back into the furrow. In most soil conditions, this is done at full throttle in third gear. If you drive too fast, the dirt is more likely to be thrown than rolled over. Be sure to raise the plow after each straight line furrow. Before turning, you must always lift the plow with the sleeve hitch and lower the plow with the sleeve hitch before plowing each furrow. 
After your second furrow, adjust the depth crank and replow another furrow until a five to six inch depth is achieved. Then stop the tractor with the plow in the furrow. The center of the coulter bolt should be two inches above the ground. If the plow appears to track to the left, or the tip of the plow tends to overcut and leave a ragged furrow, you can adjust the tracking of the plow on the back of the standard and frog by loosening the two half-inch hex bolts and turning the tracking adjustment bolt clockwise in increments of two turns until the landslide is properly adjusted and the furrows are 8 to 10 inches wide. Then turn the plow depth adjuster counterclockwise to lower the plow share until your furrows reach a depth of 5 to 6 inches. When properly adjusted, the coulter will be free to swing slightly outward from the beam. If plowing with a lawn tractor that has smaller tires, tire chains and wheel weights are recommended. In extremely hot or dry conditions, the plow may not operate as intended. Fall and spring months are typically ideal for plowing. Consult your manual for maintenance and troubleshooting. And for questions, call Brindley Customer Service at 877-728-8224. Brindley, making things better since 1839.